Welcome to the Giants Hot Stove Show on KMBR.com. This is my favorite part of the week. And I mess around with Gary doing this little radio shindig Monday through Friday. That's just a warm-up for this. The Hot Stove Face-Off with my man Marty Lurie. And not only are we talking hot stove, because it is the hot stove and it's so hot, we're going to have to go sh sunglasses the rest of the way. Marty, shades on. There you go. This hot stove is so hot, I can't even get near it. You, you, know, can't. I think, you know what this is with the Grenke stuff? It's like Hanukkah. Can this go on for eight nights like this? Seriously. Well, why don't we start with Grinky? Why don't we start right there with Grinky, Marty? Just the concept of, of, of a six, let's just say what it is, a six-year, nearly $200 million commitment to Zach Grinky. Are you thumbs up? Thumbs down or on the fence on, on that level of a commitment for this pitcher? Well, it depends what happens after that. But if they have come to the conclusion they're going to spend, and they must have come to some conclusion to spend 150, 170, well, what's the difference if you kick in another $5 million a year if you want the guy? So it's amazing to me that they've been in it this long and that they are putting up this kind of money. So do I want them? I mean, if they're going to pay the money, why not? If it means they can't do any other free agent, then I think it's a problem. And that's how I feel about it. But, you know, Larry, if, let's say they've offered $30 million. What's 35 What's another $5 million for six years to get the guy? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting it's an interesting guy. I mean, he's if he were a guy who every all of his success was predicated on the radar gun, then I would probably say, you know what, I don't feel comfortable going six years when I know that six years is going to be age thirty eight. But I really think the 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 magic of Grinky is his ability to add and subtract location. Uh, I I think he's a a, tr a real pitcher, and I think he's going to age relatively well. But I still think, Marty, if you're getting into this kind of a contract, I think you got to look at it as a trade-off. I think the Giants are looking at it as a trade-off, and the trade-off being this, that that age 38 season, you may be giving a $31 million donation, but if you win the World Series in one of the first five seasons, I think the Giants would be okay with that. I would be as well. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Uh, he, and plus you get him away from the Dodgers. So to me, I can't imagine what's taking so long unless it's a guarantee of a sixth year or something like that. So what's the fallback? This is the problem. If you don't get them, we'll talk about this. But honestly, it goes on every single day. The winter meetings are coming up starting on Monday. Maybe he's delaying the announcement uh, and they're going to drag this thing out so they'll have a big splash on Monday in, in uh, Opryland down there in Tennessee. But it's really mind-boggling to me that it's going on this far. So do I want them? Absolutely. If they're willing to spend 30, let them spend 33. Who cares? And the question is, what do they do after that? Are they strong enough after that to compete? Yeah, no, I think it's a, the interesting thing to me, and I think the difference maker and the reason I would be I, I like Grinky. I like the idea of having a dominant starter. Is because look what look what the Giants have been the last couple of years. I mean, the Dodgers. We don't know what they're going to spend. Uh, they may spend close to three hundred million dollars. The Giants may be in once again that one game wild card. Well, if you're in a one game wild card, you know you, I, having a dominant starting pitcher. A true ace is a, is very advantageous, and I think when you look at if the Giants look at themselves as a team that's going to be in that wild card, I think Grinky makes sense. I think if the Giants are envisioning themselves as a playoff team, I mean, you have to like without if I told you nothing else other than you're going into a playoff series and you have Madison Bumgarner in Game One, Zach Grinky in Game Two, and Bruce Bochy in the dugout. I think most smart baseball people would say. I'll take my chances with the rest of it. Yeah, no, I agree. And plus, don't forget, the league is getting tougher. The wild card now is tougher. You've got to beat the Dodgers. But the Dodgers now a new philosophy, you know, with Friedman and Farhan. Do they not want to spend all They want to be cute and try to get away without spending all this kind of money. So you're competing against them. So you take away their top pitcher, one of the two top, obviously, Granke. You put him on your team, and you, you've improved your team. So, uh, look. Forget about the money. When this whole thing started, we said, who do you want? 
And we said, Greinke's the guy you want. So now we're down to the money, and let's see what they do with him. Yeah, let me ask you one more on the Greinke before we take a time out and get into part two of this. Um, Larry Bear went on Comcast a few weeks back and said, look at the track record for five-year deals for pitchers who are over the age of 30 at top dollars and go find the one that really has worked out. And the point being that these deals are rife with issues and they very rarely work out. And and yet he is the Giants managing general partner. Um, he's not necessarily the biggest. He's not the majority owner. Uh, he's building, trying to build consensus among the owners. You're one of these guys, Marty, that knows some of the owners. What do you think's going on behind the scenes with the Giants? Because it's one thing to say that, but then the Giants are clearly in the mix for for Grinky. So did Larry get overruled? Is Sabian calling the shots? Is Larry Nibby calling the shots? Is, is I mean, are the Burns daughters calling the shots? I mean, who ultimately gets to say, you know what, this is too risky? Is it Bobby Evans? I mean, who exactly is the lead dog in Giant Land from your perspective? Well, I think it's a lot of everything you said, but uh, it's a consensus of what you said. Last year, they made the commitment to go after Lester and spend $160, $170 million. It didn't work out. They obviously are comfortable with spending that kind of money. Larry Bear can say whatever he wants, but here we are. We're sitting here in segment one on Friday, and Greinke is not signed, and it's between the Giants and the Dodgers. We know the money that they're tossing around, so they're in it. Are they in it to win it? That's the question. Will they go the extra mile to do it? But it's a combination of everything you said, and I believe that they will spend the money, even though they don't want to spend the money. They're in it, and it's it's going on. As I said, it's been going on for five or six days this week. Since Price signed, the attention is on Grinky. It hasn't stopped, so the Giants have got to be in it. So my answer to you is all the whole crowd you just mentioned, they're on the same page. They're willing to go into the big hundreds of millions. It's a question of how far, and that may be the issue right now. We're assuming Giants and Dodgers. I heard word in the last 24 hours that the Red Sox had kicked tires. I mean, Marty, I know and I know Nesson gives them unbelievably deep pockets, but they just spent $217 million on price. Is there any chance the Red Sox in one offseason land Price and Grinke and he leaves the National League altogether? No, I don't think so. I really don't. I think he realizes he wants to be in the National League anyway. Price went to the American League, which I think is a huge mistake for him. We've talked about this. Aging pitchers want to be in the National League. It's easier. You get to have a number eight hitter and a pitcher to pitch to. I don't think the Red Sox are the team in there. The Cardinals are one, but I don't think they're going to spend that kind of money. Uh, the Rangers are mentioned in teams like that. I think it's Giants-Dodgers. I think everyone who's reported it, they're all over it. Casey Close is not Boris. He's not one of those mystery team guys. And I, I think it's Giants-Dodgers, and I think that's where it's coming down to. I thought it would be done today, but apparently there's some hang-up. But I think the money is being spent. Now, I'm interested in the next segment with you and I. Yeah. Because if, if he does go back to the Dodgers, then what do the Giants do, and how much time do they have to do it? Well, that's a great place to uh, to take a little time out. We'll take a, a brief time out. We'll pay the bills here at KMBR.com, and there are vast bills. I mean, do you know what these KMBR.com guys make? I mean, these guys are making boatloads. They're driving Bentleys. They're, they're I mean, these, these we got to pay the bills. So we'll take a quick time out. We'll come back. Part two, we're going to get into where do the Giants go from here? What do they do in left field? Are they going to offer Ben Zobras $15 million a year at the age of 38? That, we're talking about four years for a 34-year-old ball player. We'll get into that. Alex Gordon, Dave Roberts, the new manager of the Dodgers. A lot to get to on our hot stove extravaganza. Marty and Larry, more straight ahead on KMBR.com.